Welcome to Fireside Giants. My name is Alex with my co-host here, Anthony Rivardo. And my friend, how awesome is it to watch Dallas and the Eagles lose in the same day and get knocked out of the playoffs? I haven't been this happy in months. Watching them get absolutely blown the hell out is so much fun. Dallas, obviously, a little bit closer of a game, but they were they were uh, trailing for the majority. Um, the ref having to place the ball, I was crying, laughing. I don't think I've actually laughed that hard in so long. Just just utter joy flowing through my veins as the, the ref calls game in front of Jerry Jones and all the Dallas fans and Dallas fans are throwing shit at the refs and throwing shit at their own players, yelling for Mike McCarthy to get. This is exactly how we have felt for like months, if not years. And finally, we can watch Dallas do it all over again. They can't do anything in the, play- in the playoffs. It's just hilarious to watch. But I'll tell you what. The candidates for our general manager spot, they kicked some freaking ass this weekend. All of them, for the most part, kicked freaking ass. And our top four, we're going to be ranking our top four, Anthony and I, individually, top four GM candidates in, the, in today's video and why. Um, but for the most part, the top four guys that we're going to list, they all kicked freaking ass this weekend and their teams and their roster building were on full display, especially in some of these blowout losses going into Jerry world and winning with Jimmy Garoppolo as your quarterback. And he's injured is not easy, not easy. And the four went in there and kicked some ass. So I'm really excited to talk about these GM candidates and list our top four preferred options um, in order. But anything before we dive into it, how are you doing today, my friend? I'm doing great. And of course, shout out to the NFL playoffs and watching the Eagles lose, watching the Cowboys lose. Great stuff there. But I can't wait to one day watch the Giants win in the playoffs. And hopefully one of these GM candidates that we're going to discuss will get the job and be the guy that can turn us into a playoff team. That's always the hope. But there are some really great candidates on the list for the Giants. I know that they're interviewing about nine in total. We're going to list our top four and some really great names that we're going to discuss. I mean, you got guys from the 49ers, got guys from the Bills. You got a lot of really great names, really talented names, incredible names on this GM candidate list. And I'm super excited. The Giants are definitely moving in the right direction in terms of their candidate evaluation. And I'm very excited about that. So hopefully the Giants are able to land one of these top four guys and turn them into a Super Bowl contending roster. Well, that's the hope. And there are a couple of these teams, Bills, Chiefs, even you could you could throw in the fight at 49ers into that mix. They're all, you know, uh, at the kind of the top of the league right now. They're all contending for a Super Bowl. They're all capable of winning a Super Bowl. Um, and that's a pretty awesome sign for us, right? Because from a candidate, we obviously went with Dave Gettleman. He's been to a Super Bowl in the past, you know, blah, blah, blah. But he was he was outdated. He was old. He, you know, obviously at the end of his career and just was kind of using us as a uh, as a as a as a kind of a cash grab, I guess. Um, but now the Giants have an opportunity to go outside of the organization and bring in a winning modern culture, right? Bills, winning culture. Uh, 49ers, winning culture. Chiefs, winning culture. Baltimore, winning culture. And a lot of really great head coach candidates to go along with. Mike McDaniel, Brian Dable. Um, you know, of course, Brian Flores is a guy who seems to be getting a lot of attention these days. Um, so it's really exciting. We have we have a lot to be excited about for the future of this team and the hope of a legitimate rebuild. And we have a lot of draft capital. I imagine they'll be trading um, guys in the future. We'll do it. We'll do a video on players we think that could be cut or traded in in the coming days um, to kind of check out. Well, after the GM is named, we'll do a video like that, so you guys have an idea of who might be on the block to be cut or traded. But to start off, I know Anthony has a different number one slot than I do, but I'm going to go with Joe Shone or Joe Shane as my number one preferred candidate. And the reason is they have done such a great job to build around a rookie quarterback. And I think that has to be noticed. That has to be appreciated. When you look at the 49ers, they've went out and they got Trey Lance and he's not ready yet. They went out and they got Jimmy Garoppolo and he's clearly, you know, has his issues. That interception he threw yesterday was God awful over through that guy by a million miles. And, you know, when you're looking at the chiefs, they also have a really great history of, um, you know, building around Mahomes. But the thing is, Ryan Poles is only in the first year of his uh, of a executive job as the director of pro personnel and whatnot, and scouting in college. He's done a really great job in helping them build the offensive line, but he only has one experience at, at that top level. So, do you already want to promote him to a GM spot? It might be too early. I don't think they're going to go that route. But with that being said, my guy is is Joe Shane because he's worked hand in hand with Brandon Bean to build a competent roster on both sides of the ball. The Bills have one of the best defenses in football right now full of athletes, full of great young players. They're getting a lot out of their youngsters. Um, 
AJ Epineza, um, you know, they have Ed Oliver, they have um, Basham, they have some really great young talent, and they're getting the most out of them. And they, you know, they traded away, uh, uh, what's his name, uh, Tredarius White. They've done a lot of things to, you know, they've supplemented losses pretty damn nicely. And I, I'm pretty impressed with what they've done to build not only a competent secondary, but a good scheme to uh, around their defense and the playmakers they do have. So defensively, I'm really impressed with the way that they've uh, shown up this season. They've you know, come back from some bad games and had great games. Of course, they just destroyed the Patriots, completely shut them down at home. And then offensively, you look at what they've done, right? You look at Josh Allen. He came to the league. He was a wild thrower. He had an insane arm, terrible accuracy, no decision-making. He didn't have that kind of refinement and that processing level. And Brian Dable and, and, you know, Brandon Bean and Joe Shane, they built a system around him and gave him the personnel to succeed. You know, Stephon Diggs went out and got a great receiver for him. They got some really great complimentary running backs. Isaiah McKenzie, Devin Singletary, Zach Moss. Um, did a really tremendous shot. Dawson Knox at tight end. He's a good, he's a good player. Uh, Gabriel Davis. They don't, they have a lot of playmakers that fit the system that they run and not just playmakers for the hell of it. The Giants have Kadarius Tony. They have Saquon Barkley. They have Kenny Galladay. They have Evan, you know, Sterling Shepard, but there's no system around it, right? They just have names with no system and not a way to maximize that. What I like about what Joe Shane has done um, as the assistant GM and, you know, helping Brandon Mean as his right-hand man in college uh, talent valuation and pro evaluation is really assisting him in being a guy that they can lean on to make the correct decisions and and put guys in a place where they can succeed. And then the, and then Dable, who could be a, a combination with with Joe Shane, they've done a tremendous job roster building, but also maximizing the players via scheme and concepts. So that really stood out to me as well in this game against the Patriots because you know beating Bill Belichick in the playoffs is not easy. He always comes ready, and they kicked the shit out of them. So I think that that's something to be uh to to be excited about. Josh Allen, the way they build around him and developed him, I give a lot of credit to that coaching staff in the in the front office. And when you have a culture like that that does everything that's necessary to build around a quarterback, they the Giants did such a shit job doing that against around Daniel Jones, and that must be addressed um, for the next quarterback, whoever it might be, or with Daniel Jones next season, Anthony. I think that Joe Shane and, and uh, Brian Dable, or specifically Shane in this instance, gets my nod of approval because of that. Yeah, now I think that Joe Shane is a phenomenal GM candidate. He's not my number one, but it's really like – the top three for me are like 1A, 1B, and 1C. I view them all as like excellent candidates. 1A for me is Adam Peters. 1B is Joe Shane. That's kind of how I look at it. So yes, he's second on my list. And everything that you said about Joe Shane is completely accurate. He's done a phenomenal job helping Brandon Bean really work together uh, and fix that Buffalo Bills roster. They were in cap hell in 2017 when Bean and Joe Shane took over. And they really fixed the salary cap space. They found a lot of talent in the 2018 NFL draft. And they've built a phenomenal roster since then. They found so much talent. And Joe Shane is actually widely regarded as one of the best talent evaluators in the NFL. But there's another guy who's on our list that's really considered by most people to be the best talent evaluator in the NFL, and it's Adam Peters from the San Francisco 49ers. And personally, he's my number one GM candidate because of his talent evaluation. Yes, the Bills have been excellent. I'm not taking anything away from the Bills when I'm saying that Joe Shane, you know, he's helped find a lot of great gems in the middle rounds. But the amount of gems that Adam Peters has found in the middle rounds is un freaking believable he is really just one of the best talent evaluators in the nfl of course the whole system that the san francisco 49ers have in place their roster evaluation talent evaluation roster building of course their coaching staff is elite arguably the best in the nfl they have so much talent all across the board on their coaching staff and on the roster so you can't have both like you have to have both right it's got to be great coaching and great talent on the roster and and 49ers have done a phenomenal job finding both they have great talent in both aspects and of course the front office is killer they are so good at evaluating talent they're so good at using positional value making the most of every single draft pick and extracting all the value that they can from their draft capital. They're really great at that. And of course, there's other candidates that are also great at that. I want We're going to talk about um, Baltimore Ravens candidate in a little bit, who has been phenomenal at extracting value in the draft. But for me personally, you, you look at the talent evaluation, all the gems that the 49ers have found, thanks to Adam Peters. I mean, even if you go farther back in Adam Peters' career, he gets a lot of credit for being the one that drafted Von Miller, who's one of the best players in the NFL when he was with the Denver Broncos. So of course, Adam Peters just has a like 20 year history of finding gems in the draft. And for me personally, that's what I think the New York Giants need. They need an evaluator that can find gems in the NFL draft, build this team through the draft, because this roster right now, a lot of it built through free agency. Name the best players on this team. Most of them were signed through free agency. Blake Martinez, James Bradbury, uh, Leonard Williams, Trey, technically. 
Um, and of course, they're building through free agency. And I think that going forward, they need to learn how to build through the draft. And who will help them do that the best? In my opinion, it's Adam Peters. Look, the, the free agency is great for plugging leftover holes. It is not great for plugging essential holes. You need the draft to be the foundation of your roster building. And like you said, Adam Peters, tremendous candidate. It's really close between him and Joe Shane. Um, and like you said, it's 1A, 1B, 1C. Like These are tremendous candidates, guys. Adam Peters, when he when he was hired from the Denver Broncos to go over to the San Francisco 49ers, they didn't even they didn't even need an interview from him. He was so well respected as an NFL talent evaluator. He had respect from Bill Belichick, from John Elway, and the 49ers didn't even interview him. They were like, "We're offering you the job without an interview." And he literally was like, "All right, sounds good. I'm getting a huge pay bump, and I'm going to become um, a big part of that of that organization." And what they've done over there to build not only a good team but a mentally tough team and Fred Warner they have so many Arden and key some tremendously talented players um I mean think about all the running backs Elijah Mitchell uh, Trey Sermon was great before the injury um they've done so many great things Debo Samuel second round pick um we we took DeAndre Baker we traded up and took DeAndre Baker instead of Debo so there's a lot of things that this that this uh Adam Peters can do this guy he's capable of accomplishing as the head guy, as the head guru, you know, he is at the cutting edge of modern analytics, cutting edge of modern uh, talent evaluation. We need that type of involvement within the Giants organization. And look, if it's Joe Shane, when I say I prefer Joe Shane over Adam Peters, and if they hired Adam Peters, would I be mad? Not a freaking chance. I would be super, super, super ecstatic and happy about getting Adam Peters. There's no question about it. He's one of the best talent evaluators, evaluators in football, and he is my number two guy. So like you said, 1A, 1B, you can't really go wrong with either, both outside of the Giants organization, both bringing over a culture built in in physicality, playmakers, athleticism, modernized techniques, and modernized concepts. You literally, if the Giants want to go into this, the, you know, get dragged out of the Stone Age, these are the two guys who are going to lead the way for them. Um, and Anthony, you know, is your number two guy Joe Shane? I imagine it is. So we're kind of flip flop. Yeah, there. my number two guy is Joe Shane. Like I said, I really like Joe Shane. He's one B for me. Adam Peters, one A, one B. Joe Shane, and then the next guy is also one C. I really love the top three candidates in this list. Right. So I think Anthony and I both have uh, the same third guy, and um, Hort Hortiz, right from Baltimore. He spent twenty three years. Joe Hortiz. Hortiz. Joe Hortiz. Th- twenty three years. 23 years in Baltimore's organization, learned under Ozzie Newsome. Um, he's been around some of the best talent evaluators, best guys in terms of culture in football. Baltimore, year in and year out, just develop and brew physical teams with modern approaches. Now, their defense definitely has a risky approach when they play a lot of cover zero, a lot of cover one, a lot of blitzing, but they sustained a monstrous amount of injuries this year, which really put them in a bad spot. Lamar Jackson going down, Tyler Huntley going down. Um, you know, I, I'm pretty sure the running back situation, um, J.K. Dobbins got injured early in the year. They had a lot of injuries, so I'm not surprised they didn't make the playoffs with the, with the way that they that they kind of battled. But I'll tell you what, they almost made the playoffs, and their whole team was injured. The Giants, whole team injured, they were the worst team in football. That's the difference between good roster building and bad roster building. Even if you're injured, you can still sustain success to a degree. Um, so, you know, when I'm looking at Joe Hortiz – He is a tremendous uh, candidate as well. Would I be mad about getting him? Not a chance. You know, he knows what a great organization looks like. He's learned from the old guys to the new guys, right? He's not Dave Gettleman who did not develop. um, And and it took him two years to realize, oh, crap, analytics is necessary um, after he took the job. Hortiz is is around the the cutting edge analytics, the running games, like, if there's any two running games in football that are that are at the top of it, it's Baltimore and um, it's San Francisco. Those two teams are at the top of the running games, and the Eagles too actually are pretty decent. Um, but screw them, we know you know they got knocked out of the playoffs. So super happy about that. But you know Joe Hortiz, really great candidate, tons of experience. He has a lot of essential knowledge coming from the Ozzie Newsom era. Um, and, and, you know, if we're gonna go that route, he's also not a bad candidate. I'll, I would say I, I do prefer. Peters or Shane, but would I be mad about Hortiz? Probably not. There's not that many teams um, that need. I guess there's a couple teams that need GMs, but I don't really get Anthony why teams are interviewing head coaches at the same time as GMs. I don't really get that concept. You know, you should get your GM and let them hire head coaches. Like the Vikings are kind of doing both um, at the same time. I don't really understand what the what the logic is there, but. Uh, whoever the Giants do bring in at, at uh, you know, GM, I imagine that the list of head coaches they have will probably involve a couple of mixing and matching. You know, maybe Adam Peters would like a Brian Dable from Buffalo. Maybe he'd like a Brian Flores from Miami. 
Um, there's a couple of different things there, but Anthony, you know, what do you like about Joe Hortiz and, you know, would you be happy with him as the GM? Yeah, what I love about Joe Hortiz is draft construction, how they allocate their resources through the draft. Now, I found this on Twitter, and I'm, I'm going to explain it. I think this is really, really eye-opening as well. Um, since 2002, draft picks by round. Round one, New York Giants, 12 draft picks. Baltimore Ravens, 11. Round two, New York Giants, 9. Baltimore Ravens, 8. Now, here's where things get really different in terms of roster building. Round three, New York Giants, 11. Baltimore, 18. Round four, Giants, 10 picks. Baltimore, 23. Round five, New York Giants, 10. Baltimore, 13. Round six, Giants, 9. Baltimore, 13. Round seven, Giants, 10. Baltimore, 6. So you see a much heavier emphasis plays placed by the Baltimore Ravens on the middle rounds of the draft. And that's really where they build out their roster. You know, when we're talking about having good depth on a roster or we're talking about finding gems in the middle rounds, it's all about how you allocate your resources. Are you putting in the necessary work to find these depth pieces, to find these gems in the middle round? The Giants take, you know, I mean, since 2002 have taken 11 third round picks. I mean, Compared to 18 from Baltimore, round four, 10 picks for the Giants compared to 23 for Baltimore. And we're always complaining round three and four. The Giants are not finding any players in those middle rounds. They're not hitting on the round three or the round four picks. Baltimore, on the other hand, is always finding these gems in the third and fourth rounds. Why? Because they're taking more selections in the third and fourth rounds. They're building up all these picks. They're super smart with the way that they spend their money. They're always getting comp picks, and they're always finding gems in the middle rounds because they're allocating their, their resources towards those middle rounds. So in terms of talent evaluation, Adam Peters is arguably the best. Joe Shane is kind of the best of both worlds, can kind of do it all, right? But if you're talking about building a roster from the ground up, doing it the proper way in terms of extracting value and allocating resources. Joe Hortiz is the best candidate in that regard because he's been working in this phenomenal Baltimore Ravens front office that just knows how to evaluate talent and also knows how to extract all the value possible from every single draft selection, knows how to allocate their resources. I mean, this the Baltimore Ravens are arguably the best ran front office in the NFL, and it's because of stats like this one that I just pointed out to you. The Giants have just been so bad drafting in the middle rounds, and it's because they're not even drafting players in the middle rounds. They're taking such a small amount of their picks and allocating them towards the middle rounds, but the best teams in the league, they're allocating their, their resources to those middle rounds because they understand if you want to build through the draft, you're not building through the first and second round. You're building through rounds three four, five, and six, those are where you really build a roster and turn your team into a championship contender. So that's my most compelling argument for, for Joe Hortiz is the way that they allocate those, their resources and the way that they really extract all the value possible in every single NFL draft. Yeah. And before I move on from Hortiz, there is a, uh, one thing I do want to read you guys. Um, a Ravens official told New York Post's Ian O'Connor, Joe almost never makes an evaluation mistake. Since 2019, when Hortiz's role expanded, the Ravens have drafted 16 Pro Bowlers and six first team All Pros. The Giants have drafted six Pro Bowlers and two first team All Pros, despite routinely having the better draft position. Just two of the Giants' 10 eligible first rounders have signed second contracts, while three of the Ravens' nine eligible first rounders have been retained. So clearly, he has a lot better of a track record than the Giants over the last couple of years. Um, I mean, 16 Pro Bowlers compared to six, that's 10 additional. And that's absurd. Six compared to two first team All Pros, like it's not even close. We're talking triple the success the Giants, triple, triple the success the Giants are having. Triple. If you tripled the Giants' roster right now, you'd have a good team, right? That's essentially what we're saying here. If you tripled it, you have a good team. Um, he's a great a great candidate. No no question about it. Now, the only thing I would say is that two of Aussie, New Aussie Newsom's former um, protégés have failed as general managers in um, their own role. The, the, New York job, the New York general manager's uh, job is a, is a big spotlight spot, right? A big spotlight position. If you have that, you got to have the personality. You have to have the guts. You got to have the balls to take the criticism that comes with the job because – as we know, we're pretty good at dishing it out, <laughs> um, and we're pissed off. We want to win. So I think that's something that, uh, to keep in mind. Now, the last guy on Anthony and I's list is Ryan Poles from the Chiefs. Now, Ryan Poles, as I said earlier in the video, one year of experience, um, but he is an offensive line master class like, evaluator. He is one of the best when it comes to evaluating offensive linemen. The 49ers, or rather the Chiefs, sorry, have turned over that offensive line in a season, and they've become, I think, the sixth or seventh ranked pass blocking unit, good run blocking unit as well. Um, they've done a tremendous job. 
giving Patrick Mahomes the time to, you know, operate. And we clearly saw it. I think he was sacked a couple times um, this weekend, but ultimately he threw for like, what, four touchdown passes, completely demolished the Steelers. So pretty easily, pretty easy uh, win there. But I will say this, Ryan Poles, his lack of experience does concern me, which is why he's the fourth on the list. But if they did go with him, would I be upset? I would not be upset. I think that he would do a great job building the offensive line back up to where it needs to be as a competent unit before getting your quarterback. So I think I'd be happy about that. Um, but the offensive line, that's that's the one portion that really uh, is a convincing factor for me. A lot of these GMs have great success uh, drafting offensive linemen, Anthony. So when you're looking at Ryan Poles, is it, do you think he's a legitimate contender for this job? Or do you think maybe he's just a little bit too inexperienced? I absolutely think he is a legitimate contender because if the Giants are very serious about fixing the offensive line, he's probably the best contender for that specific job, right? Because Ryan Poles, former offensive lineman himself, phenomenal at evaluating offensive line talent and the way that the Kansas City Chiefs rebuilt their offensive line overnight actually does a lot uh, of favors for Ryan Poles and his general manager um, campaign. So I like Ryan Poles a lot. Having him fourth on this list is really no slight to him, no diss to him. I think that he's a strong candidate. I mean, out of the nine, he is number four. So I do really like Ryan Poles. I love the way that the Kansas City Chiefs build their roster. And I know that he's definitely learned a lot from Brett Beach over in Kansas City. So I like Ryan Poles. He's kind of one of those young and risky hirings you know it's a little bit more bold you're going with a little bit more of an inexperienced guy to kind of run the show so it would be a, a little bit of a surprising hire for the new york giants and it would be kind of the riskier hire out of the ones that we've mentioned so far but i do think that he is a great candidate and would do a lot for the giants and their roster construction and building um through the draft with the offensive line yeah, I think that you're you're kind of spot on with that, saying it's more of a, a risky uh, signing, a risky hire rather for the GM spot. But you know, nonetheless, anyone you can get from the Chiefs, anyone you can get from the Fort Niners or the Bills, you're really hitting it out of the park, or even the Ravens too with Ortiz. So um, there's a lot to like about these candidates. I'd love to hear your rankings um, below in the YouTube comments. I'm really curious to hear what you think. Um, if it's different from ours, maybe Hortiz is number one for some of you guys. I know a lot of people are really high on him as well. So curious to hear your thoughts. As always, make sure to like and subscribe below. And again, super hyped. Dallas Eagles knocked out. I can't. I couldn't be more uh, happy about that. You know, just just feeling the pain. I can. I can almost feel like the pain radiating from Philadelphia. I'm in New York right now. I can just feel it radiating. Um, in Dallas, even I can feel it's like a jet stream coming right off the East Coast. It's fantastic. Um, <laughs> hope you guys enjoyed the episode, and we'll catch you guys on the next Fireside Giants.